Cyrus. Come, excuse me, for Tyrus. And say to Tyrus, O thou art situate at the entry of the sea, which art a merchant of the people for many isles. Thus saith the Lord God, O Tyrus, thou hast said, I am a perfect beauty. In other words, that spirit of Baal, Tyre, Europa, consider itself perfection in the earth. And God says, let me show you something. Go, go to chapter 2, I mean chapter 28. Verse 2, it says, O son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit, look, I sit in the seat of God. In the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not a God, though thou set thy heart as the heart of God. So we have to understand the nature. Mm -mm -mm. Understand, see, see, one thing you have to understand, God's prophetic word will be fulfilled to the T. Uh -huh. But we have to make sure we're not deceived. Amen. So what Amen. happens is the Bible says in James, I mean in uh, John 2, to love not the world, nor the things thereof. Yes. Because all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the uh, eyes, and the pride of life. So one of our examples of how we don't get caught up in these things is not to set your affection on things on earth. People are, I mean, I, I, I tell you, it, it's a shame to see how many Christians have sold themselves out for money, putting their affection yeah. on the dung. Yeah. Yes. The stuff that's to be burned. Yes. Yes. Put yes. so much affection on it because you have a little something. True. You would not be a billionaire or millionaire, multi-millionaire in this world without bowing to something dealing with Satan. Mm -hmm. Many, 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 many Christians or political or as Christian leaders have fallen. Like in Timothy said, you pierce yourself with many sorrows, desiring to be rich. There's nothing wrong with money in itself because it's nothing but, you know, the elements of the earth put together. But what the problem is what you worship behind it. That's where mammon comes from. We're worshiping an idol God and using this as a tool to worship this thing. That's why you have these different agencies, secret service, secret societies for musicians, secret societies for presidents, secret societies for everything of power structure in this world, there's a secret society associated with it, and you gotta understand that you cannot bow to those societies because they consider themselves beautiful. The very thing that was say, the king of Tyre was saying, or Tyrus was saying, that they consider themselves beautiful. So things are considering themselves beautiful before the people and God says that you will be condemned. Mm -hmm. Why take all the colors of the rainbow? Mm -hmm. I love color. The color wheel, the color spectrum. Mm -hmm. Beautiful stuff. They're taking that and making it the most perverse thing in the world. Perversion. Like it's beauty. Perversion. Yes. So the enemy wants to sit there and take Things that are beautiful, considered yes. beautiful, and corrupt them yes. and make the corruption seem beautiful. So the way for us to understand that we can live holy and live righteous in this time and this age is don't set your affection upon the things that look beautiful in the earth. Because you will be set up for idol worship. As Pastor Shante has said on many occasions, a lot of these mega preachers they are sitting there setting themselves up to be idol worship centers. They have set themselves up to be that. They worship other things behind closed doors in order for the populace to come to them. And then they preach messages that are not sharp and not clear and not pointed about Jesus and salvation. There is minutiae of beauty with no power. 
A form of gods, no power there, denying the power thereof. So we gotta understand is that your Holy Spirit in you yeah. will come against the powers of this world. So you can sit there and not have very little money or very little income and stand in the place where a billionaires and trillionaires are, declare the word of the Lord and watch the kingdom economy come into your come towards you. Moses stood before Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, the richest one of the time, the rich, Egypt, the richest kingdom like of all time. He stood before the very leader of that kingdom and says, let my people go. Didn't bow down. Didn't compromise. Well, you think, you know, well, since you are the Pharaoh and you got a lot of people and you have this employment program, you have this economic development program and stuff like that, this housing program that deals with a little bit of whips, you know, things like that. You know, we, I guess, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, let them go another 400 years and they work, at least they have a place to stay, they have a place to eat, you know, so they have a house over their head, but they still slaves. And God comes to set people free. Yes. And you've got to stand against the powers of this world to set God's people free. And you have to do it with pointed dignity. Not being a weak bag. You can't go and desire what they have and try to get them to deliver you from what you want to have. Amen. It doesn't work that way. So that's a mixed message. Don't eat the king's meat. Yes. Don't get caught up in the world's wealth. Yes. Mm. Because the world, listen, the scripture talks about the wealth of the wicked being laid up for the just. But in order for it to be laid up, the wicked got to be put down. You're not just going to take the wicked stuff. They got to be put down. Example, Egypt, the firstborns were all put down. That broke the back of the nation. Yeah. And then what happened? They let say, go take that stuff. Take all stuff. Get away from us. That's literally what's going to be happening in this end time. Uh -huh. Where because of your appointed presence of God, uh -huh. people will, will, will experience plagues and various wonders from God, not figuring out how to get out. Of this. They just want you out from their territory. And also just take all that stuff with you. You see? So understand, don't worry about being an outcast. Uh -huh. Don't worry about being an outcast, but you're not supposed to be in with the world anyway. Yeah. Uh -huh. Praise God. So on that note, I pray we're going to probably talk about this some more next week, Amen. but I pray that you got something out of this message today, Amen. and give God an honor and praise. Hallelujah. God is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be honored. And uh, we just